Put your worries outside the door Let them fill you with the Holy Ghost And everything that is not a fear Let them do with it Cause heaven is right above you God is willing to download to you His spirit abundantly just for you and me to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Give to
And so this morning we want to move quickly into the Word of God. And the title of this message is Living Stones. The title of the message is Living Stones. I want to start off with a key scripture. This is our anchor scripture from the book of 1 Peter chapter 2. And when you start to read the scriptures and uh, you look at these great apostles and men and women of God, and you come across Paul, powerful apostle, did many things, great wonders, and he preached powerfully the word of God. And on the other side, you have this gentleman by the name Peter, who I suppose in many ways similar to Paul, but also in many other ways so different to Paul. And this, this man Peter, this apostle, walked with Jesus, called by Jesus, walked with him, saw everything that happened, and he kept an eyewitness account. And here in this particular text, he then starts to give instruction to the church. And this is what he says from verse 4. It says, coming to him as a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious, you also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious. And he who believes in him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble, being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. I want to take a little bit of a detour and... Um, you know, I, I reflected on how far this church has come, Celebration Church, Johannesburg. And I would believe at the early days, uh, Pastor Noel speaks about it very well. And he speaks about the uh, restaurant worship, the days of worshiping in the restaurant, until eventually they then decided, look, you know, when the presence of God is there, there is prosperity. So there was prosperity. And uh, the guy thought, you know what, they're getting so much more business. And they decided... It's time for us to leave, but God had other plans. So he moved us to Kailami Castle. And I think this was around about 2007, 2009, if I recall well. And uh, I remember this is the time when we uh, joined this specific FOC. And one thing that struck me at the time, I'm not sure if Deacon Moore you would remember, but for worship, we would play a CD and we would do backtracks. And then eventually... Um, Pastor Tracy would then play the keys. Um, but this is how far we have come. When you stand and you enjoy the praise and the worship here, sometimes it's hard to forget how far you have come and the stages that you've gone through. 
And from there, we moved on to Danefern, around 2009, thereabouts. And we, we worshiped there for, for, a, for a season. And uh, I recall for the praise and the worship team, again, we would set up and we would tear down every single Sunday. And uh, it was amazing. We enjoyed the presence of God in that place. And then we moved on further from there to the place across the land of promise. Again, we enjoyed worship there. But for those that would recall, there was a remote button somewhere that whenever someone decided it was time to mute, then they would mute and uh, praise and worship would be cut because there were seminars happen happening there and we just couldn't worship as freely as we do today. And so God had plans for us and he opened a door for us and we eventually moved into this place, this place, this land, this land of promise. And we are here in this sanctuary, such a marvelous thing that God has done in our midst. And when you look at it, the number of people that we had to accomplish something as of this magnitude is something that can only be God. Many would know the nights, the all-night prayers, the days that we, we stood in the presence of God and we petitioned Him, and it came to pass. But this is not the end, Celebration Church Johannesburg, because there is still a 15,000-seater that needs to be built. We are passing through, and this is not the end. We have a stopover and a lay-by, but this is not the end. And so each and every one of us, there is still a work that is ahead of us. The assignment still beckons that each and every one of us lays hold to the task that is before us, that we may see the promises of God come to pass. Hallelujah. And so in 2020, we experienced something that had never been experienced before. COVID hit and all of a sudden the churches could not congregate freely. And I remember this, Doc said, let's go online. And I said to myself, how do we achieve that? We have never done anything of that magnitude. We have never been able to achieve. We have seen it with other churches. But in our hearts, we, we felt that this was a challenge that was insurmountable. But we started step by step. We started making tracks. We started off recording with cell phones, mobile devices, recording the services. I remember the days when, you know, we would send out, we had a roast and we would say, you're next, you're introducing the Sunday service. And people would, they would do all their nice makeup in their homes and they would stand before their cell phones and they would record and say, welcome to Celebration Church Johannesburg, our online service. And we did all of that and we started and um, one day, someone say one day. You see, I was waiting that I will leave the nation of South Africa and then I will send a compilation of these bloops and blunders so that people can't chase after me <laughs> when I do. But we, we have all these and in as much as it was trial and error, but things started to move. Things started to move. So we moved on from recording with cell phones in our homes. We then started recording here on site, and we would record on a Wednesday. Uh, we would come in the morning, and uh, I know all the, the people that stood before the pulpit, they would come, and uh, we would click the record button, and uh, they would start a message just like this, and uh, then they would say, oh, no, but wait, wait. <laughs> Cut, let's, let's, let's take that again. And, uh, and, and then we would do that. Um, we were afforded the grace to do that. Right now, I can't do that. I can't say cut. Maybe cut. Let's start again. <laughs> But that, that was how it was. And, and, and so we, we, we started and we carried on and we were encouraged as we, as we kept doing that and we started streaming and um, we started flighting it and eventually one day the instruction was, let's go live stream. And uh, again, we thought, oh my goodness. If we have to take two, three takes, how do we do it on live stream? And we started. Again, the grace was there. And right now, we are streaming live. We have been streaming live consistently. And this is the God that we serve. So sometimes it takes taking a step back to look at how far you have come, to really appreciate where you are in what God is doing and establishing in your lives. Just to give you a couple of stats, and I know sometimes you, it's not visible to everyone, but I just want to give you a bit of background. Right now, 
on our YouTube channel, we have about 407 subscribers in total. 407. And we are growing. So that means every time we post anything online, 407 people receive that notification that there is something that has come up online. We have had 789 channel views just in the past 28 days alone. 789. 25% of them are on our live stream, as we are right now. The other 75%, they will catch up with the streams that we have done, but also they follow the polls and everything else that we do have. So we do have a followership. 43% are subscribers and 57 are non-subscribers. What does that mean? There are people out there that are not even subscribers, but are still clicking through our content. The message of God, the word of God that is being delivered in this pulpit, that is powerful. And they are being able, they are able to see it, to view it, to hear it. All in all, we have had about 28,794 views in total on our YouTube channel. 28,794. That is impressive and it can only be God. Our Facebook channel, equally impressive. 7,572 minutes viewed in the last 28 days. 665,208 minutes viewed since March 2020 when we started our online streaming. 600,000 minutes. 43% are live stream and the views from shares plus or minus 10%. Here's my challenge to you, church. I believe a lot of us are on Facebook, YouTube. 10% of these views that I'm giving you, only 10% are from shares. Can I challenge you this morning to share the message of God, to share on your channel or your page or your, your profile, share the word of God, share the message of God, and sometimes you don't even have to say anything. Just repost that link and just say amen. That's all you need to do. And share. Because as we start to do that, I believe that we will see an explosion of the congregation that we have online. The message we receive here is impactful. It changes life. When I start to look at the mountains of influence, when I start to look at the messages that we have received, when I start to look at all the exhortation we have received on this pulpit, I believe it will change lives. So my challenge to you this morning, number one, don't forget how far we have come. Number two, please post and share, and let's see what God will begin to do. Hallelujah. Turn to the person next to you and say, post and share. Say, I'll be checking. <laughs> Bless God. And so the next slide, I want you to see this. This is from 20th of July, 2014. And this is right before we moved into this premise. In fact, it was right before the building started. And this is an invitation for the groundbreaking ceremony. I'm not sure if the text is large enough, but it says at the bottom there, it says, and I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, the gates of Hades, will not overcome it. Hallelujah. I want, I want you to say it with me this morning. Just say, and I tell you that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Bless God. And so we move back to our key scripture, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4. It says, Coming to him as a living stone, rejected indeed by man, but chosen by God and precious. I want you to know that there must be a running towards Christ, coming to him. Church, this is the time that we need to begin to run to Jesus. This is the time that we need to run to him who is the author and the perfecter of our faith. This is the time that we need to start running to him and say, God, without you, this assignment is unattainable. That without you, we cannot achieve it, whether it be any Anything in your life, any endeavor that you want to do without him, it will not be possible. And so we need to run towards Christ. We need to move and move towards him with an intention, knowing that God is able to achieve the things that he has purposed in our lives. But it also then says coming to him as a living stone. So we realize that God is indeed the living stone. Christ is the living stone. 
Ephesians chapter 1 verse 22 says, God has put all things under the authority of who? Of Christ. And has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body and it is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. And so we start to realize that as Christ is the head of the church, we, the body of Christ, depend on him. We depend on God for anything that we want to do in our lives. We depend on God for anything that we want to achieve. It says that he is the one who fills all things everywhere with himself. And so knowing that God fills all things and that God is building us as the body of Christ, we need to know that anything that we build must be built with Christ first. John chapter 1 verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. And so God was there in the beginning. But then it says, The Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. That is the Christ who is the head of all things. And so I want to be running to Christ who is the head of all things. Because if He is the head of all things, and if He was in the beginning before all things, surely I know that He knows everything that pertains to my life. If he was there in the beginning, every situation that has shaped me, he has seen it, he has known it, and he knows where I am today. If he was there in the beginning, then there is nothing that can catch him by surprise because he knows all things. And so therefore Christ, who is said to fill all things everywhere, and when we start talking about everywhere, it doesn't mean just, remember God is not restricted by time. So when we say everywhere, it means everywhere in the past. It means everywhere in the present, and it means everywhere in the future. And so when we run to him, we know that Christ fills everything everywhere. Be it in the past, be it in the future, Christ fills all things everywhere. And so that is the Christ that we run to. Coming to him, or running to him, or going towards him as a living stone. That is what we need to do as a church. And so it says, coming to him as a living stone, Rejected indeed by man, but chosen by God. Christ was chosen to fulfill the mandates to ensure that we have our redemption. So already the plan of redemption, God knew it from the beginning. And so when he did it, he did it with a purpose. Your salvation has got a purpose in it. Your being here today has a purpose in it. Us being in the presence of God, there is a purpose that God has destined for each and every one of us. You see, Christ is referred as the living stone. But then it also says that he is the cornerstone. The cornerstone that was rejected has become indeed the chief cornerstone. The stone rejected has become the cornerstone. What exactly is the cornerstone? See, when you start to read about it, I credit this to Wikipedia. It says the cornerstone is the first stone in the construction of a masonry foundation. All the other stones will be set in reference to this stone, thus determining the position of the entire structure. And therefore, anything that we build has to begin with Christ because he is indeed the cornerstone. Everything else that we do is done in reference to Christ. We have to reference Christ. He is our compass. He is our positioning. He is the one who determines how we shift and move everything else because it needs to reference Christ. It determines the positioning of the entire structure and therefore the positioning of the church, the positioning of, of, of you as an individual and as a family should be referenced by Christ. That is what it means to have what it takes to build something that lasts because as long as it is being built with reference to Christ then you will surely not fail. There is a term that is often used, which is called the lender of last resort. I don't know if anyone has heard about it. But it's referred to as an institution, usually the central bank, that lends when there is a liquidity crisis. When there is a liquidity crisis and you can't find that cash anywhere else, then the central bank lends. How many times have we come to God as the lender of last resort? Because in your life, maybe you have tried to build something and you realize that the positioning of things are not really referencing him. And therefore, we come to him and say, God, help us. But thank God that he is faithful, that he restores, and that he realigns. 
Because as long as we align with him, we realize that God is not the lender of last resort, but in fact, he is the beginning. So we start all things with him. He is the first. He is not a by the way, and he's not a last resort, but God is the first in our lives. And so we reference him as a church celebration, Church Johannesburg. We reference God as the first. And as we do that, he begins to build us. And then in verse 5, it says then, you also. So we've established that Christ is the living stone that we need to run to. But verse 5 goes on and says that you also as living stones. So not only do we see Christ as the living stone, but we see ourselves being referred or referenced as living stones as well. And so we know that as Christ is, we should imitate to become. We are moving more glory to glory to become more and more like him. Our main objective and purpose is to become like Christ. And so we are referenced as living stones as well. And it says in verse 5, we are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So we are called to imitate Christ. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1 it speaks about us imitating Christ. Paul says, imitate Christ as I, as I do, or as I imitate Christ. 1 John chapter 3, and this is the second portion of this scripture. It says, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. So if we're imitating Christ, I question myself and say, if I'm imitating Christ, and if he was made manifest to destroy the works of the devil, am I imitating him also in that endeavor of destroying the works of the devil? And I think that is a question that each and every one of us needs to ask ourselves because we all have the assignment. And the assignment is not about us getting saved and we come and we sit in church and we high-five each other and we go out and we come back again next week only to do the same. The assignment is for us to go and destroy the works of the devil. There is a great commission that we have. There are people out there that need to hear this message. There is a healing that needs to come to the world. In fact, the fallenness that we see in this day and age, the wickedness that we see is only becoming worse and worse. Sometimes you stop and you ask yourself, how much worse can it get? Because the rot is coming through every single structure, every worldly structure that we see. And therefore, you and I have been commissioned to destroy the works of the devil. So you take a pause and you ask yourself, what have I done lately to fulfill this mandate? What have I done lately to be more like Christ in this specific aspect? Celebration Church Johannesburg, I'm here to tell you this morning that we have been mandated to destroy the works of the devil. The works of darkness in this city cannot prevail as long as Celebration Church Johannesburg is here. They cannot prevail. Otherwise, we would have failed our mandate. So it is up to us to stand in prayer and pray for this city, to pray for this nation, to pray for our families. That is our mandate. And therefore, we realize that either we are causing havoc in the kingdom of darkness, three things, either you're causing havoc in the kingdom of darkness, or you're not doing anything because Maybe we've been neutralized to such an extent that the kingdom of darkness is not even bothered by us at all. So they leave us alone because we've been neutralized. If you're neutralized, no one, no one cares because you have no effect. So either you are there causing havoc or you're neutralized and you have no effect, no one has interest in you, or you're on the other side where you're actually working with the kingdom of darkness to promote. It's a tough truth, but it is a question we need to ask ourselves. And I ask myself, and I say, where am I? Am I moving with God to destroy the works? Have I been neutralized and I'm sitting by while things are happening and I'm not questioning, I'm not, I'm not speaking the word of God to situations? When we see so many things happening with our youth, are we speaking things into their lives? Or are we sitting by and we say, oh, they'll get taught at school. And when we look at the institutions, they themselves have been perpetrated and infiltrated 
So the value systems that are coming out in these institutions actually do not align with the word of God. And so we need to take a stand. We need to take a stand and say, I have been commissioned to destroy the works of the enemy. And I'm doing my part. I'm standing in prayer. I'm ministering the gospel. I'm not letting this chance go to waste. And so it says, as living stones being built up as a spiritual house, God is building us up. Each and every one of us, God is building us up, not only as individuals, but also as a corporate body. So God builds each and every one of us together to achieve his purposes. Ephesians 4, verse 15, he says, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things, that is us, into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causing growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. A couple of things I want you to note there. It says that joined and knit together. Joined and knit together. As a body of Christ, we need to work with each other. We need to work hand in hand. We need to encourage each other. We need to challenge each other. But we also need to push each other. I believe we need to be open and honest and say, Deacon D, you're in charge of services. Why is it that such and such is not happening? Why is it that we haven't done this? Why is it that we are still in this level? It's not a challenging of a confrontational challenge. It is a challenging of saying, I'm sure we can do better in this. But more than that, we then go ahead and say, how can I help you? Because I'm here to help. How can I help? I believe it is a time that we begin to see a service where we probably have almost no one in the seats because everybody is serving elsewhere. Everybody is in the choir and singing, and we're saying we are here to worship God, to serve Him. I'm praying for a service where we see more men in the choir. I'm praying for a service where we see all these things because we are joined and knit together, and we build up, we're being built up as the body of Christ. And when someone approaches you and says that, may we not take offense. Because we are working towards the same goal, the same vision. We are working towards the same thing. When you serve, there is something that happens. God begins to work. I can tell you things that have happened in my life are not because of my intellect. They are not because of anything that I've ever done, any clever, intelligent plan that I've ever made. But it is because I've been in his presence and I've said, God, I'm going to be there. I'm going to serve I don't care what it takes, and I don't care what people say. People will say, yes, he's done well. For those that don't know, I used to be in the choir, praise and worship team. I think for a long time, they, people were gracious with me. They just never told me to say, but maybe you're better off serving in another place. People were very gracious, but, but th that is the body of Christ. We build each other up. We help each other. Even if you are singing and you're not the best singer, but we're praising God. Amen. And we're doing it together. He says, let us come and magnify the Lord. Let us exalt him together. Yeah. Very many times it doesn't talk about let us exalt him together in perfect harmony. It doesn't say that. It doesn't talk about perfect harmony. It just says let us exalt him together. Perfect harmony has become something that we see in the world, and because of that, we are all striving for perfection. When some of these mega institutions release albums, whatever, we listen to them and we hear perfection and we think, I can't do that. I can't sing because I can't sound like that. But that's not what God desires. No way in the word of God does it say, I want you to come singing to me in perfect harmony. It's good to hear perfect harmony, it is great. But God doesn't say, if you sing out of tune, therefore I'm not going to accept the praises that you're giving me. And so if you have wanted to be in the choir, come and join the choir. If you wanted to be in the band, go and play in the band. If you've wanted to be an usher, hey, all it takes is you smiling and saying, here you are, take a seat. 
do something in the house of God. We are being built together. We are being knit together. Be the first one here. Say to God, God, I will be the first one there. I will be the first one there. I will be the last one to leave. Why? Because I'm not doing it for man. I'm doing it for, for God. At some point one day, we will stand before the throne of grace and God will say, my son, my daughter, every single thing that you have done, he has got it. There is no work of service that you have ever done that God has not noticed. And therefore, my encouragement is, as we are being built up, joined and knit together, it says, by what every joint supplies. So every joint needs to be supplying something. Every joint needs to be bringing something to the table. Every joint needs to be contributing. And we have been graced and gifted by God with something that you can bring. Dr. Makoni spoke about it and talked about the assignment you are unique. There is no one else like you. That which you can bring, no one else can bring. The unique thing that you can bring, no one else can bring. And so bring what you have. Be the joint that is bringing and saying, I am bringing into the body of Christ. This is my contribution. And as we begin to be joined and knit together, as we begin to supply according to the effective working by which every part does its share. It causes the growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love, according to Ephesians chapter 4. And so we see this man writing this encouragement, this exhortation. Peter himself knew all about being a living stone. Matthew chapter 16, verse 15. And this is what the word of God says. It says that he said to them, this is Jesus, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. The gates of Hades shall not prevail against it, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Peter, this same apostle that uh, beckoned and said, Jesus, if that is you walking on the water, call me out and I will come, and he did. And for a minute, he walked on the water, and then the second minute, he failed to walk on the water. Because he doubted, he looked at all the waves around him and he began to sink. But this is the same guy that Jesus looks at him and says, on this rock I will build my church. This is the same guy that later on goes on to deny Jesus. When they asked him, are you one who had been with this man? He says, oh, <laughs> not me. He was an imperfect man. But even in his imperfections, Jesus looked at him and he said, on this rock, I will build my church. And so we begin to see that even ourselves, as we come in the house of God and serve, we are not perfect people. And if you have expected perfection from anyone who is serving, we need to relook at that opinion. We need to relook at that perspective. Because no, no one of us is perfect. Peter was not perfect. He walked with God. He saw everything he did, but yet he had his imperfections. But God had the audacity to say to him, I will build my church. And so I'm here to say to you this morning that even with our imperfections, God says to each and every one of us, I will build my church. Amen. I will build my church. What was the one thing that was required? It was Peter saying, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And God takes that response and he says, that response is a revelation. That response can only be revealed, not by man. It's not by flesh. It says, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. Who here has not been revealed by Jesus that indeed he is the Christ, the son of the living God? We have received that revelation. 
And therefore, as we have received that revelation, it stands to reason that on us as well, as rocks, as living stones, that Peter says we are, Christ will build his church. And therefore, we are being built up as living stones where God will build the kingdom of God. Don't wait for perfection to serve. Don't wait for perfection to do the work of the ministry. Do it anyway. And so we look at ourselves as living stones. And in that same vein, destroying the works of the devil, the works of darkness. Something very peculiar I noticed, and this comes from a scripture we know very well. 1 Samuel chapter 17. I will read, I will read from verse 38, and we'll start to wind down. Verse 38 says, Then Saul gave David his own armor, a bronze helmet and a coat of mail. David put it on, strapped the sword over it, and took a step or two to see what it was like, for he had never worn such things before. He did it to see what it was like, because he had never worn such things before. The things that God will begin to do in CCJ you will begin to see what it's like because you have never done them before. Amen. New things that God will dare you to do because you have never done them before. Amen. He says, I can't go in these, he protested to Saul. I'm not used to them. And some of us will, we shout, you know, we, we protested. We said, we're not used to these things. Live streaming, doing camera, all of these things. We said, we're not used to these things. And so David also said, I'm not used to them. So he took them off again. He picked up five smooth stones from a stream and put them in his shepherd's bag. Five smooth stones. Why were they smooth? You see, we are living stones. The smoothness of the stones, that texture, it signifies that likely they were taken from a river, if I'm not mistaken. He took them again. He picked them from a stream. It means that water was flowing over these stones for a sustained period of time. Who is the living water? He says, I'm the well. Anyone who drinks of me will never thirst again. So Christ gives us. He is the living well. And so as this water moves over our lives, all the imperfections, all the roughness, all the edges are taken off. He begins to shape us and mold us and we become these smooth stones. So whatever God is working in your life, don't be mad at God. Because he is working something in your life. Sometimes it, it, it hurts. Sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes it's challenging. Sometimes it takes you standing in faith and saying, God, I don't understand what's going on, but I'm going to praise you anyway. Yeah. We don't have to understand. But he is smoothing our edges. So these five stones, he took them from the stream and he put them in the shepherd's bag. Who is the great shepherd? Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. Amen. I shall not want. Amen. So he put them in the shepherd's bag. Then armed with his shepherd's staff and sling, he started across to fight the Philistine. Verse 48, as Goliath moved closer to attack, David ran out and meet him, reaching into his shepherd's bag and taking out a stone, living stones. He held it with his sling and hit the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank in and Goliath stumbled and fell face down in the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. As we start to wind down, I want you to realize a couple of things. As we are living stones, the body of Christ, may we realize that we are the threat to the enemy that will extinguish his agenda. What slew the giant was not a sword to bring him down. Yes, David eventually took a sword and cut off his head. But what brought the giant down was not a sword. It was a stone. So as you and I are living stones, realize that we are the enemy, the threat to the enemy. We are the threat to the enemy that will extinguish his agenda. The term slay did not originate from the world. It originated from the scripture where David slew Goliath. 
So I will say to you, slay and go and slay. Hallelujah. We are the living stones. Go and slay. I want you to realize that when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, one of the things that the enemy said was, turn this stone into bread. And Jesus rebuked the enemy. He said, man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. The word of God is our daily bread. I want you to realize something very quickly as we start to close, as we reflect on us being living stones. You see, the enemy wanted to take a living stone, something that is firm, something that is enduring, something that is a weapon and a threat to his kingdom, and to have it turned into bread, which is something temporary, something that is used for sustenance for the moment. And Jesus says, no, I will not do that. This stone will remain a living stone. The word of God continues to say that even if we do not sing our praises, the disciples were saying, tell these people to sh shut up and keep quiet because it's the triumphal entry and people were praising. This these guys are making a lot of noise. Tell them to shut up. God says, Jesus says, even if they were to shut up, the very stones would cry out. So the living stones attribute praise to God. We as living stones, we attribute praise to God. God will not allow us as firm and enduring and the foundation that he will use together with Christ, the cornerstone, to build his church. He will not allow it to be exchanged for something for the here and now. And also in our lives, sometimes we go after temporary pleasures, but we forget the enduring thing, the important thing. So here, as living stones, do not let your position be taken by anything that is temporary. Number three, I want you to realize that if you are the weapon that God is relying on, if you are the living stone of Christ, it's a question I need to ask myself and say, how solid am I as a rock that Christ can build on? How solid am I? Am I reliable? Am I reliable? And if I'm serving, can someone rely on me to say that Deacon Darlington will be there? And if he is there, don't worry about that assignment you have given him because he will take care of it. It's a question I ask myself, am I that person? And if I'm not, I strive to make sure that I am. Because you are indeed the rock on which Christ is building. Therefore, we need to be firm. We need to be reliable. Again, let us serve. Let us contribute to the body of Christ. Let these ministries depend on us. Let us go above and beyond to ensure that the kingdom of God the agenda of God is completed. Celebration Church, Johannesburg, we are on a trajectory. As we started, we realized that when you take a step back, we see the magnitude of what God has done. But we also see the magnitude of what God is setting us up for. This assignment needs you and I not only to grasp that we have a part to play, but to commit to be so dependable that God can build our lives upon our lives to further his agenda. As the chief cornerstone calls us to co-labor with him to destroy the works of the enemy, we are the smooth stones in the great shepherd's bag that will slay every Goliath and every wall of opposition. Bless God. This morning I'm going, to, um, I'm going to do two calls. I'm going to ask you to stand. And as we do, the first call is for anyone 
who has listened to this message and says, God, I realize that you have a plan and a purpose for me in this church. You have a plan and a purpose for me. And I want to be that stone that you will use. I want to be that stone that, that is dependable, that is reliable. That when I say I am there, I am there. The stone that will go above and beyond, that you build your kingdom with me and in my life. I am that person. And maybe I've served, but I haven't served to the best of my ability. There are times where I've served, but I've not really done it with giving it my all. This morning, I just want us to come to God and just say, Lord, we, we reconsider our ways. That we want to we want to contribute. We are the joints that contribute to this body of Christ. That we see great things happening in Celebration Church Johannesburg because God, you are using each and every one of us, each and every one of us doing their part. If that is you, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. I just want you to just pray with me this morning as we commit our lives to him and say, Father, we thank you this morning um, for your word that has gone forth. We thank you, Lord, that Indeed, we are living stones. And we come to the chief cornerstone, that is Christ, Jesus Christ. And we say, Lord, we repent for the times that we have served, but not giving it our all. We repent, my God. And we say, Lord, may we be the dependable stones upon which you can build your, your house. Father, we come before you, Lord, and we say, may we use each and every one of us, Lord, if we haven't been serving, Lord, we come before you and say, Lord, we are ready to be used by you, Lord. You have given us the great commission to go out and make disciples of men. And so, Father, we pray this morning that, Lord, use us, each and every one of us, with our imperfections. We come before you, Lord. We say, Lord, we know that we are not perfect, but as we come in your presence, Lord, you use us. You mold us. You use each and every one of us, Lord. So use us, my God, as we avail ourselves. We say, send us, mighty God, to do the work of the kingdom of God. That, Lord, we can be the dependable people upon which you will build your church. Father, we acknowledge that there are great and mighty things that are in store for this church, for celebration as a movement, for the body of Christ as a whole all around the world. There is a great mission that you have for us. You have called us for such a time as this. May we be the Daniels, the Esthers, the Josephs, the people that you have put in this season that we may effectively minister to the world that is hurting to the world that needs to hear this message of salvation. So we thank you, Lord, that as we come before you, Lord, may our lives never be the same again. May we never go back and may we, Father, reject complacency. That, Lord, we would be the stones living that you will build your church upon our lives, with our lives, and in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And with every head bowed and every eye closed, if if you've never accepted Jesus, if you've never accepted Him as your Lord and Savior, whether you're in here or on the live stream, if you're watching, um, if you're in here, I want you to raise your hand, lift it up high. We want to see you and we want to pray with you. If you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and if you're online, just type it in the chat that I'm accepting Jesus today. I'm accepting God today. I've had an encounter with Him and I'm accepting Him today. So if that is you and you're online, we just want to pray with you and say, repeat these words with us and say, Heavenly Father, I come before you today. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner and in need of a Savior. I also realize that I cannot do this on my own, but I need a Savior. And I come to you. I run to you today. And say, Lord, take over. Have my life. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I accept that the blood of Christ that was shed on Calvary was for my sins. And I realize that today as I come to you my sins are forgiven as far as the east is from the west that's how far you remove my sins from me 
I believe that as I accept you today, I come into the kingdom of God. You are now my father. I am your child. I belong to you. So Father, as I walk daily with you, shape me, mold me, and use me as a stone that you can depend on for this great work. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. If you have prayed that prayer, uh, we believe that there is a change that has happened in your life today, that God has come into your life. You are now a child of God. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. You are now a new creation. God has forgiven your past. It is, you're walking in freedom. You're walking in a life that is not held back by the things that you used to hold you back. So as we come to the end of this service, church, let us indeed become the living stones that God will depend on. Thanks be to God. And today, I just want to give you the offering message, which is from Psalm 112. It's from the daily Bible reading for today. The Word of God says, good will come to those who are generous and who lend freely, who conduct their affairs with justice. And in verse 8 it says, their hearts are secure. They will have no fear. In the end, they will look in triumph on their foes. They will freely, um, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Their horn will be lifted high in honor. I think I just want to say, best even when what Deacon has said. It says good will come to those who are generous and learn freely. And I'm not going to say much. I think the word has said that those who give freely. I don't know what that means in your life but for me, lending freely, giving freely, it says without holding. Without withholding. No withholding. When I think about it, it's not to say, it's not about where I am. It's not about my circumstances. It's to say God, this belongs to you. It doesn't matter. So as we thank God for 2022, let's just give freely to him who has given to us. Amen. I'm just going to ask you to kindly uh, come to the front and give your offering. And for those who are online, even for those that are here, we've got our banking details. We also have our digital channels where you can uh, give. We've got... Um, Snapchat, we've got Zepa. We also have got um, swiping machines. So after the service, if you'd like to swipe, uh, you're free to go into the foyer and you can swipe there. Amen. Part of me always wants to stay in my comfort zone and do nothing. That is why every day I have to battle with myself. I have to work on myself to become better. There are times when I experience failure and get too tired to fight. I become less like myself. I may even overlook how I hurt people close to me with my words. The only thing that helps me recover is prayer. It gives me the strength within me to fight and overcome difficulties. Jesus helps me become better, and in this, I find happiness.